Championship Big Weekend, Mouth v Blackpool, QPR, O'Neill, Darnell Furlong. The championship is well and truly back in full swing and Benjamin Bloom has you covered everyone you need to be watching out for this weekend, with odds from Betfair throughout. Match to watch, Bournemouth v Blackpool It's a coastal derby this weekend as Blackpool make their way down to Bournemouth. I say it's a derby game in the loosest sense as Google Maps has just told me it's 289 miles from Bloomfield Road down to the Vitality. How about a playoff derby? Last season Bournemouth were beaten in the championship semi-finals, whilst Blackpool efficiently went all the way to promotion in the League One playoffs. I'm stretching for similarities really. Wind back just a handful of seasons and you'll find Bournemouth in the Premier League and Blackpool in League Two, the two clubs both trending steeply in very different directions. But things have a habit of evening themselves out, and now the two sides meet as equals in the championship. Equals, who am I trying to fool? We all know about the leagues within leagues, and this will once again be a battle of the Haves v Have Nots. Bournemouth just sold Arnott and Juma to Villarreal for a reported £21 million. Last summer Nathan Ake, Aaron Ramsdale and Callum Wilson left for a combined reported £79 million, and over their first two seasons in the championship Bournemouth will be receiving around the same amount in parachute payments. Granted, Premier League relegation has left them with some big bills to pay, but compare that with where Blackpool has come from, and it's a different universe. The Tangerines have a hard old task down on the south coast. Bournemouth already have seven points so far, and a goal-shy Blackpool have just one. Scott Parker seems to have learned lessons from last time in the championship with Fulham, and the Cherries are playing at a more decisive pace and energy. This seaside rendezvous seems stacked in Bournemouth's favour, but if Blackpool return with more than a stick of rock, perhaps their confidence will begin to tower. Bournemouth to be promoted 15 eighths, Betfair, team to watch, QPR everybody seems to be on the QPR wagon now and it's taken only three games for Rangers to transition from top half dark horses to many people's tip for the playoffs. The goodwill for QPR was based on an excellent second half of last season, a switch to a 3-5-2, the arrival of Stefan Johansson and Charlie Austin, and everything else seemed to click. The summer recruitment drive saw last season's highly effective loanees join full-time, and also added some extra squad depth. The first three games seemed to have shown even more of a light on the team Mark Warburton has built. At the back Rangers boast a solid base of Johan Barbet, Jordi de Widges and the outstanding Rob Dickey, whilst further up the park the flair and finishing of Chris Willock, Ilya's chair, and Lyndon Dykes looks like racking up plenty of goals this season. The championship requires no small amount of resilience, and the midweek win at Middlesbrough saw QPR go behind early, equalise, and then twice take the lead, when playing with 10 men. Many teams wilt when dropping down to 10 men, especially in the face of a big ugly Neil Warnock team, QPR did no such thing. Rangers are part of a top six all tied on seven points from three games, they sit third with ominously two-year one parachute teams above them in the table. Up next, it's Barnsley, and perhaps the passing of the torch from last year's people's favourites to this QPR year's. QPR to win both halves 13 halves, Betfair, manager to watch, Michael O'Neill Stoke have made a fool of me every season since they've been back in the championship. Without fail I'd be seduced by their recruitment, financial power, and an always talented playing staff. Every time I'd predict the playoffs, or better, and be completely mugged off by 16th, 15th and 14th place finishes. This season I cut my losses, and stuck them in the middle of the table with the understanding they've always had the potential to be up challenging in the top six, and equally, if manager Michael O'Neill wasn't getting things right two seasons in, patience would wear thin quickly. The start from Stoke this season has been strong, wins over Swansea and reading either side of a draw at Birmingham means the Potters are one of the group of teams leading the way in the championship on seven points. The recruitment is starting to look good, Ben Wilmot and Leo Ostigert have been added to the giant Harry Souter in an imposing looking back three. Sam Surridge was added up front ahead of the existing midfield quality of Sam Klukas, Nick Powell and Joe Allen. All of a sudden I'm getting seduced again, when will I learn? Michael O'Neill was excellent in his first season at Stoke coming in and steadying the ship after the poor period under Nathan Jones, but he seemed to have lost his way last season. The truth is Stoke have under edge of their financial power and squad quality, but we all know what a bit of momentum can do, and if they're anywhere around the top of the table, when Therese Campbell eventually returns then who knows. As ever I'm right down the middle, as to whether we'll be seeing good Michael O'Neill or bad Michael O'Neill. Stoke to finish in the top six, Evs, Betfair, player to watch, Darnell Furlong.
WBA, every professional wants to leave their mark on the game any way they can, a lasting legacy that means the mere mention of their name conjures up a certain image. Certain players are known for winning big games at the top level, certain players are remembered for all the wrong reasons, and certain players just might have that one thing that makes them stand out. If I were to say the names Andy Legg, Dave Challoner and Rory Delop, we would respectfully not be putting them in the greats of the game, but we certainly remember them, and most football fans would immediately know the one thing they have in common. Long throw-ins. Long throw-ins are often sneered at by so-called football purists, but the simple numbers tell us that, when used regularly can be as effective as any winger or number 10 in world football. A throw-in is far more frequent than a key pass, a through ball, or accurate cross, and far more easy to win. They can be practiced with the circumstances pretty much identical to an in-game situation, and best of all, you can't be offside from a throw-in, which can create much chaos for defenders setting up to stop them. In West Brom's midweek thrashing of Sheffield United, the long throw-ins of Darnell Furlong, the baggies right wing back were the stuff of awe. From early in the game you could see the Blades' defense couldn't deal with them, and it quickly became enthralling and almost impossible to stop staring at the car crash unfolding in front of our eyes. Two of West Brom's four goals were scored this way, and a further three near misses immediately come to mind too without having checked back thoroughly. The Baggies sold brilliant creative ace Matthias Pereira preseason. after these first few games I'm wondering whether the throw-ins of their right wing back will blow Pereira's chance creation numbers totally out of the water. West Brom win, and over 2.5 goals 13 fifths, Betfair, 18 plus. Begamblyware.org.